Elizabeth Joy here. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you causes of hair loss and hair thinning, and then natural solutions as well. Before we get to it though, you might be thinking, what does Joy know about thinning hair and hair loss? She has so much hair. And yes, I do have very thick, healthy hair, but it wasn't always this way. And it really took an emotional toll on me when I was in my early 20s. I had literally half of the amount of hair than I have on my head right now. And it was due to hormonal imbalance, nutritional deficiencies, and using too many chemicals in my hair. Now, when you're wishing your hair would grow faster or get thicker, it always seems like it takes forever. But your hair on average really only grows about half an inch per month. So if you think over the course of a year, okay, so that's like six inches per year, not a lot. So you really have to be patient. You know, you're really not gonna start to notice a difference until about the three month mark with the positive changes that you're making and then more so at the six month mark when you start to see more baby hairs growing in or your hair just looks healthier, thicker, shinier. Now, before we get started, buckle up. This is not a short video. I have a lot of information to share with you. Get your pen and piece of paper out right now because you're gonna wanna take some notes. Okay, so let's talk about some of the causes of hair loss and thinning hair, and then we'll also address all of the solutions with those. The number one most common cause of hair loss and thinning hair is, are you ready for this? Stress. Now, there are numerous reasons why this is the case, but I'm gonna share with you three specific reasons why stress messes with your hair. Now, when you're stressed out, your adrenal glands pump out hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, and these stress hormones actually alter your hair's growth cycle and can put your growth cycle into resting phase. So that's because of a stress hormone. Another factor that stress does is it totally messes with your digestion. If you're in a chronic state of stress, you don't actually digest your food properly, and that means you don't assimilate and absorb the nutrients as well. And you need nutrition for healthy hair because you can only have healthy hair if your blood is delivering nutrients to the hair follicle to create healthy hair. So stress really negatively affects your digestion. And the third problem with stress in this cortisol is that it reduces really important components of healthy hair. One of them is hyaluronic acid. You may have heard of that for plumpness and healthiness of skin, but it's also really important for healthy hair follicles. And when, what cortisol does, it, it can actually reduce hyaluronic acid by about 40%. And it is so important in your scalp to reduce inflammation and keep the hair follicles healthy. Okay, let's just talk some quick solutions here. You need to make sure that you set aside me time every day. That could be time to listen to your favorite podcast, to listen to music, dance around the kitchen. There are so many things that you can do, but you have to make a choice to decide, say, hey, you know what? I need to take five minutes, I need to take 20 minutes, I need to take 30 minutes just for me every day. Maybe that's going for a nature walk. What a great way to reduce stress hormones and boost your overall happiness. Exercise is a fantastic way to reduce stress. Yoga, Pilates, meditation. There are so many free meditations on YouTube. When you go to bed at night, pop in your earbuds and listen to a 10 or 20 minute meditation. And that is really going to stimulate the relaxation response. You will feel better and it's going to help you manage stress. When you manage stress better, then you lower those hormones like cortisol that are negatively impacting your hair. Okay, my next common cause of hair loss and hair thinning are nutritional deficiencies. And it's a bit of a double whammy because it's not a matter of just eating a poor crappy diet. Also stress is very nutrient intensive and can cause a lot of nutritional deficiencies as well. So I'm just gonna go through all of these nutritional deficiencies here and you can see how each of them can be related to hair loss and thinning hair. First up is vitamin A. Vitamin A is really important to help produce sebum and moisturize the scalp and this keeps hair shiny and healthy. B vitamins help to make red blood cells which carry oxygen and nutrients to the scalp and hair follicles. Biotin, this is also a well-known B vitamin for hair health and it's an important one because a common deficiency sign of biotin is thinning dry brittle hair and biotin is important to stimulate the production of keratin in hair. 
Vitamin C protects the hair from oxidative stress that ca that's caused by free radicals, and vitamin C gets severely depleted in times of stress. And you also need vitamin C to produce collagen, a protein that supports hair health. Vitamin D plays a role in creating new hair follicles. Vitamin E is an antioxidant that prevents oxidative stress. There's studies that show how people with hair loss experienced almost 35% increase in hair growth as a result of supplementing with vitamin E. Iron, a deficiency in iron manifests as thinning hair and hair loss. And then finally, protein, your hair is made up primarily of proteins and it's vital to support hair health and the strength of your hair. Many of those things I just talked about are depleted during times of stress, especially B vitamins. So, you know, while I don't recommend you just go and start popping all these different supplements, I do recommend you look at your diet, which is my third point. And another very common cause of hair loss and thinning hair and just hair that's not shiny is a poor diet, eating the standard American diet, which is what most, Nor what most North Americans are eating which is void of essential fatty acids, so healthy fats, you know, omega-3 essential fatty acids, which is void of phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are a whole class of nutrition beyond vitamins and minerals and essential fatty acids. There's over 20,000 known phytonutrients and they come in plant foods. And most people are really lacking in eating enough plant foods because they're eating food that is so overly processed even if it is a plant food, it's been so overly processed and stripped of all of its B vitamins, of various minerals like magnesium and iron and calcium, so many nutrients that are important not only for hair health, but for whole body health as well. You can see how a poor diet leads to thinning hair and hair loss very easily when you look at eating disorders. When you severely restrict yourself from eating food, it is one of the most common symptoms of an eating disorder to see thinning hair, losing hair in patches, you know, having loss of hair around the front. So you can see how a poor diet can lead to things like hair loss and thinning hair. And so making sure you eat a nourishing, healthy diet. On joyoushealth.com, I have hundreds of free recipes to help you eat very nourishing meals, but also really tasty meals too. So you wanna make sure at every meal and snack, you're getting enough protein, you eat healthy fats, and you have plant-based foods as well. This does not mean you need to become vegetarian or vegan because protein is really, really important. So is B12 and iron, which are most easily and readily available in animal-based foods. That being said, if you are in a vegan or plant-based diet, you need to make sure that you are getting enough protein, B12 and iron, all very, very important for healthy hair. My next point is about harsh hair chemicals. The conventional hair care industry doesn't really care about your health. There are so many chemicals in hair care products that I would never have anywhere near my body. But the problem is these industries are self-regulated. So they basically decide what goes in your product. But what you can do is you can be a smart consumer and you can read your label and you can say no to certain ingredients. So I'm just gonna highlight a few ingredients to watch out for right now that could be potentially impacting the health of your hair. Number one is SLS and SLES. This is what you find in shampoos that have that great foam. But the problem with that is they really strip your hair of its natural oils. That's their job. Their job is like a degreaser. That's what that foaming action does. But they are known to be skin irritants. They could inflame your scalp. And they're also removing that protective natural oil barrier that's in your scalp. So I definitely suggest avoiding those. Chemical fragrances, which you see in the large majority of shampoos, especially, you know, when you walk by someone on the street and you can smell their shampoo, that's definitely a synthetic fragrance and they can cause allergic reactions. They can are very, very common skin irritants that can promote things like hair loss and thinning hair. Now, phthalates are a hormone disrupting chemical that is found in fragrance that's in your shampoo. And as you'll learn shortly when I talk about hormonal imbalance being another cause of hair loss, phthalates are definitely something you want to avoid. So whenever you see perfume or fragrance listed on a label, you know for sure it's phthalates, which can disrupt your hormones, which can affect healthy hair growth. 
And finally, propylene glycol you see in a lot of products, especially hair care. Again, this is a skin irritant. You want to avoid anything that irritates the health of the scalp because that's where your hair follicle is. And healthy hair is the result of healthy hair follicles. So that's another one to avoid. Now, when I looked around myself for hair care products that didn't contain any of these ingredients, but also work really, really well, I was kind of at a loss, which is why I created my own hair care line. So the Joyce hair care line is a shampoo, a conditioner, and we also have dry shampoo, but there is none of that crap I just talked about, but we go even beyond that. And we have functional organic plant-based ingredients. For example, rosemary essential oil is in both our shampoo and conditioner, and it has been shown in studies to help support hair growth and lavender essential oil, which supports healthy hair as well. And in the description box, you will see a 15% off code uh, for my hair care line. Another really common cause that a lot of people are just not aware of is hormonal imbalance. And this was one of my causes of hair loss and thinning hair. Hormones are chemical messengers of your body. They're released by your endocrine glands and they affect physiological processes in your body. Hormones direct things and tell your body what to do. And one of them that's very important, the reason you're here is hormones impact hair growth, the health of your hair. So I wanna just share a couple examples with you of how hormones can impact your hair. Low levels of estrogen may cause an increase in hair loss. And you often see this during perimenopause and menopause, so later in life. High levels of cortisol or low levels of DHEA can also contribute to hair loss. High levels of dehydrotestosterone are related to hair loss in both men and women. High levels of testosterone in women can accelerate hair loss. Estrogen actually extends the hair growth phase. So you can see the importance of estrogen and if estrogen levels are too low, why you're not seeing regrowth of your hair. So if you suspect you might have a hormonal imbalance, it's best to speak with your doctor and you can get some blood work done to really rule that out. Something else you should get tested by your doctor is your thyroid function, which also can be suppressed from stress, but having a healthy thyroid function is really, really key for healthy hair. And one of the most common signs of hypothyroidism is actually thinning hair and hair loss. So definitely wanna rule that one out too. And finally, how you treat your hair on a daily basis can really impact how healthy your hair is and the hair growth. I would not recommend brushing your hair more than twice a day Brushing twice a day is great, morning and night, because that's stimulating circulation of the scalp, which is good. Remember, circulation brings nutrients to the hair follicles, which helps you have healthy hair. But if you're excessively brushing your hair, you're definitely going to be pulling more hair out. You lose around 50 to 100 strands of hair per day, but if you're brushing your hair more than twice, you're definitely gonna lose more than that per day. Also, always wearing your hair in a really tight bun or tight ponytail can really promote more hair loss by constantly, when your hair follicles are constantly being stressed. And also, I know I already talked about hair products in the conventional industry, but it goes without saying that dyeing your hair, bleaching your hair, all of those harsh products can really wreak havoc on the health of your hair, your hair shine, and can also really promote hair thinning and hair loss. And I can relate to that as well. As I mentioned earlier, hormonal imbalance was one of the causes of my thinning hair and hair loss. And also in my 20s, I used to dye my hair all the time all different colors, I don't do that anymore. I have actually not dyed my hair in about 20 years. Yeah, I'm getting a little white hair, but it's okay. So I know that it can really take an emotional toll on you when your hair is thinning, you're losing hair. I can totally relate to that. And I'm sending you a big virtual hug. But I just want you to know that there are things that you can do. This is not a forever situation. Hopefully you've taken lots of different notes and you can take steps to mitigate hair loss and thinning hair. And usually it's not only one cause, it's multifactorial, just like many things in the body are. So when you're experiencing hair loss or thinning hair, it's not usually one thing that's going on. It could be stress compounded by hormonal imbalance, compounded by different products that you're using that are not supporting healthy hair growth. So anyhow, if you have any questions or I've missed anything, please post below in the comments questions. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to my channel below. You can hit the little bell as well so you always get a notification when I have a new video. And thank you for watching, bye.